First, we are going to take a look at the 2022 grant totals, and we're going to be comparing the numbers to the 2019 grant report. Why are we skipping two years? Because 2020 and 2021 were deeply affected by COVID-19. Let's face it, the pandemic was a confusing time for everyone, and it's understandable that the numbers would stagnate or decrease a bit. So we're going to cut Watchtower some slack for once and focus on 2019, since that's what I consider the last year that Watchtower enjoyed some decent growth. Since 2019, we have lost more than 2,000 congregations, banished into the air. This might be explained by the closure of foreign language groups and the fusing together of congregations, but still, quite a big drop, especially being the final part of the final part of the last days. 2019 had a whooping 303,000 people baptized, being the highest number of baptisms in the last 20 years. 2022 had 145,000, an alarming decrease, especially considering baptism is a requirement for salvation in Jehovah's Witness theology. The publisher peak and publisher average count has remained stagnant, if not decreased a little. Even though after COVID, someone could be counted as a publisher for reporting only 15 minutes a month. So that alteration probably kept the numbers from truly tanking. Average Pioneer numbers actually increased, which is not surprising since during COVID, Pioneers didn't have an hour requirement, and since Watchtower now dropped the hour requirement of Pioneers from 70 to 50 hours a month, I expect the Pioneer numbers will remain constant or even increase in the following months. Now, the most embarrassing drops, apart from the baptism numbers, were the ministry hours reported and the Bible studies reported. The hours fell by one-fourth, and the Bible studies dropped from an average of 9.6 million to 5.6 million. A few weeks ago, Mark Sanderson boasted about the increase in Bible studies during the last six months. But deep down, I knew this was going to be a sherry-picked piece of data. And yep, it was very sherry-picked. Bible studies have actually been on free fall since 2019. So just a glance at the grand totals and things are not off to a good start. Now we're going to dive into individual regions. Keep in mind that I'm going to be ignoring tiny island nations and territories such as Kosrae, which had a 33% drop in publishers, but I mean the island only has like 8 publishers in total, so not surprising. It's normal to have dramatic shifts in the numbers when your island has a tiny number of publishers, so we're just going to ignore those. Now let's get to it. Ah, Europe, the continent leading the world in terms of leaving religion. Christianity in Europe has been on a constant decline for a few decades now. For example, the UK for the first year ever has reported more people that identify as non-religious than those identifying as Christians. That's very sweet. However, this year Europe was not as badly hit as I expected. Most European countries had slight decrease in average publishers, and the rest a 1% increase. Take in mind though, that these numbers have been sustained by a constant influx of Ukrainian and Russian witnesses. Ukraine had a 4% drop, which is understandable, but that also probably inflated the numbers of other European nations. Still really, really mediocre girl overall, and it's not likely to improve. Watchtower has not had much luck in the Asian continent. It's a big continent, so let's break it down. Witnesses in the Middle East are few and far in between, mostly consisting of migrant workers from the Philippines that are living abroad in oil-rich countries and practicing their faith in secret. And since Jehovah's Witnesses are banned or restricted in most Muslim-majority countries, we really have no data to work with here. Converting a Muslim to Christianity is notoriously difficult, and in some countries, even illegal. All the countries where the work is banned, including China and Russia, are grouped together in the 33 other lands sections, which overall suffered a decline. Now moving on to East Asia, Japan is a fascinating territory. 
Only 1% of the population there is Christian. And I really have no idea how Watchtower was able to make so many converts in Japan back in the 70s and 80s. 214,000 publishers. Maybe Japan just has a thing for cults. <laughs> but the good thing is that growth in Japan has been stagnant since 2016. So at least the land of the rising sun will see better days. The rest of Asia has observed a small but constant growth, although the numbers in countries like Thailand, Bangladesh, and India have remained painfully small when you consider the total population that needs witnessing. For example, India enjoyed a healthy 3% growth from last year, although the 50,000 witnesses in the country are still nothing compared to the 1.3 billion people living on it. So there's one Jehovah's Witness for every 25,000 Indians. That's a lot of dead people once Armageddon arrives. Muslim majority Bangladesh has it even worse. There's one Jehovah's Witness for every 500,000 people. I guess the God of the universe just has a thing against Bengali speakers. <laughs> and let's not even start with China. That's going to be a massive bloodbath. Korea has also been a reliable field for Watchtower. Not the North though, there's not a single witness living in North Korea. But I guess South Korea, like its Japanese cousin, just has a thing for cults. I mean, the Unification Church, also known as the Moonies, originated there, and I think it's still going. Asia's best country for Watchtower is by far the Philippines. Catholic majority and struck with poverty, and constant typhoons, I think the Philippines will probably continue to be an ideal place for the proliferations of cults like Watchtower. Not much to say about Oceania. 1% growth with the Aussies and the Kiwis. Papua New Guinea had a huge drop though, so that's wonderful. <laughs> The rest of Oceania consists of tiny islands in the Pacific whose numbers constantly fall and rise. But I just have to say, imagine being a JW in places like Nauru, 18 publishers for a population of 700 people? You could probably finish the territory in a week. Your neighbors would probably be sick and tired of your constant preaching. Africa is the future of Watchtower. I mean, at least the Africa south of the Sahara Desert. North Africa is majority Muslim, and JWs living there preach under the same condition as the Middle East. So not a very productive field at all. Sub-Saharan nations, however, enjoyed some growth last year, with Nigeria being the undisputed champion. Almost 400,000 publishers there and probably mostly in the south of the country. That's really impressive. Angola, Congo, Ghana, Malawi, and Zambia all have more than 100,000 publishers. I'm not an expert in Africa by any means, so if one of you guys by any chance are from Africa, let me know why, but why does Africa continue to enjoy so much growth? I can only offer an educated guess. Less people in Africa have a reliable internet connection compared to other continents, making it harder for people to fact-check Watchtower before they're converted. Also, most of the population does not speak English, which makes it even harder to stumble across activist material on the internet. Parents in African countries tend to have more children than the rest of the world, so that will definitely drive up the numbers with all those child baptisms. Also, many African nations suffer from constant civil war, like Congo and South Sudan. So these horrific events always lead to an explosion in converts. I'm sure other factors come into play, of course, but one thing is clear. Africa is Watchtower's best bet at experiencing some growth in the future. I'll be watching this development with interest. So let's see, what do we have so far? Europe, Asia, and Oceania are mostly stagnant. Africa is rising, which leads us to the final continent. Let's get this out of the way first. The USA has been stagnant since 2016, and last year they experienced a 1% decline. That's huge. The US is a country with the most witnesses at 1.2 million, 
The religion was basically kickstarted here. Canada and the Caribbean didn't fare too well either. I mean, Haiti had a 5% drop. Yikes. But the real kicker is Latin America. For decades now, Latin America has been one of Watchtower's most productive fields. Most of these countries have a Catholic majority population, high poverty rates, and higher than average birth rates. I speak from experience guys, Hispanic witnesses tend to be extra zealous and bigoted. <laughs> it's a completely different world. Mexico has more than 800,000 publishers and Brazil has a whooping 900,000. But this year, there was a decline or stagnation for every single Latin America country. Argentina, negative two. Belize, negative one. Bolivia, negative one. Brazil, no growth. Chile, no growth. Colombia, negative two. Costa Rica, no growth. Cuba, negative three. Ecuador, negative one. El Salvador, negative two. Guatemala, negative two. Honduras, negative three. Mexico, negative one. Nicaragua, negative one. Panama, negative one. Paraguay, negative two. Peru, negative one. Uruguay, negative two. And Venezuela, negative two. I just had to read all of them. It's music to my ears. Latin America is slowly waking up. Now keep in mind, there has been a lot of immigration from Latin American countries to the US and Canada, which could explain the decline in places like Honduras or Venezuela. But the fact that every single one of these countries experienced a decline at the same time should really make watchtowers start to panic. It seems the activism channels are having an effect. Some XJW videos in Spanish have gathered millions of views, so that really helps the public to be wary of Watchtower. More and more people are recognizing La Atalaya or Los Testigos de Jehová as a secta or a cult. Also another thing to keep in mind that unlike Africa, which is fragmented into hundreds of languages, making it difficult for converts to gain access to XJW material, all of Latin America is united under Spanish and Portuguese. There's still a lot of work to be done in the Spanish field. I wish I had the time to make myself a, a Spanish channel. Maybe one day, who knows, but we can only expect more and more activists to rise up in the following years. So, what's in store for Watchtower? I think the biggest threat to Watchtower at this moment is not necessarily apostate material, it's the internet. Populations with higher internet access are harder to convert. Awareness of Jehovah's Witnesses has also been increasing. YouTube has been enjoying a constant flow of videos which depict JWs in a negative light, and they're not even produced by ex-members. We must not forget that our activism does not only help JWs who are on the process of leaving the faith, but it also helps the general public become aware of Watchtower's harmful policies and avoid being snared by their propaganda when, they're, when these people are in their low points. I think at this point, Watchtower has lost the battle in places like the USA, Canada, and most of Europe where the internet is available everywhere and young people are leaving religion in droves anyways. And judging from the numbers, Latin America will continue on the same trend, unless the governing body pulls a miracle out of their DECA ass. I really see no significant growth happening in Muslim or Buddhist majority countries, and I think the Philippines will be Watchtower's last stronghold in Asia for some time before they inevitably follow the course of Japan and stagnate. Africa is still a productive field, although growth is not guaranteed forever. You know, the thing is Watchtower constantly paints Africa as a backward society of people living in huts and cooking from coal-powered stoves. <laughs> Seriously, every single one of their photographs depicts Africans this way. Even though Africa is a diverse continent, with sprawling modern cities and brilliant people. If Africa continues to develop and provide education and internet access to its future generations, Watchtower will eventually lose its grip on the continent. 
the outcome has not been decided. I really think the future is looking bleak for Watchtower and I could not be happier. So let me know what you think of this analysis my guys and ladies, thank you. Do you think I got it right with my predictions? How are your things in your own countries? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to thank my beautiful patrons for their constant support. You guys keep me going. I'm super, super grateful. Special thanks to Nightcore C12. Thank you so much for joining the Tony Morris rank on Patreon. I appreciate you. I will be drinking my next glass of scotch in your honor. Okay, guys, take it easy. Have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower.